Hello again, everybody. So now you should be entering the kind of the third component. The first video talked about the structure of the class. The second got into the syllabus and for the stats guys, I had the little hiccups. You guys got the two parts for that. But now this third big component, we're gonna talk about testing. But just really, really quick before we get into the testing, I wanna quickly mention the Math Help Center. The Math Help Center has been open and for the previous couple of semesters have been entirely online appointments. From what I understand so far, they should be open for regular in-person appointments. Once I get full information, are they doing both in-person and online, which I suspect they are, but if they're just doing in-person or if they're just doing online, I'll definitely share that information with you. And the Help Center is a very good spot for getting help. I talked in all the individual videos about outside resources, part of your testing to make sure we're on the same page, it's not just right answers. I'm grading you on demonstrating the technique being talked about. So again, use the main, use my videos, use your book, use your homework. That's your first and foremost. The extra stuff that you can find online, very, very much secondary, kind of like a last, uh, a last hope, I suppose. You really don't want that to be anything that you rely on for any kind of regular basis. That's just gonna lead to trouble in some ways. But the Help Center is a very good alternative because they're always working with you and where that class is. They're not going to give you above steps. They're going to show you, okay, for where you are at this class, they want you to solve this. Those set of directions, they want you to do this. They're very good about that. And I also mentioned, you know, when you're looking for help, little things, clarifying, little help, that's perfect for me. But if you want someone to like go through your homework with you, that's not office hours, everybody. That's exactly what the Help Center is for. They are very good, but I also try and point out the Help Center personnel, they are, they are tutors, not teachers. So if you're having big conceptual issues, you really don't get what's going on, you're having that, that's the kind of problem you come see me. But if you're going through, wow, I keep making little mistakes on the homework, I got little things you check up, you want clarifications, but they are a great place for the homework. And for when you are struggling trying to get help, bring your homework to them. Don't just say, I'm having trouble with this topic. Show them a homework problem. Say, I cannot solve this problem. That is the way to make the help center as good as it can be. So like I said, how do you make those appointments? I know last semester they were trying to get faculty to do it. I would refer you um, through Starfish. And then and then there's no shame with that. I know sometimes people are afraid, like, wait a second, it's not like mark on your record or anything. It's just an online service and it allows them to track and say, oh, hey, you are referred. Let's make sure we contact this person and try and get you an appointment. Some students were doing it on their own without Starfish. And like I said, I'm not quite sure what will happen with in person, so I'll definitely let you know. Okay, so now, testing. How is testing going to work? All the classes, Trig, Stats, Calc 2, your homework is for you. Your homework is for your practice, to make sure you are understanding. Your homework is not collected, your homework is not graded. The in-class portion of your grade the, again, the trick people, you've got those two quizzes. The stats people, you've got the four tests, and you've got the writing assignments, that's separate. But you've got the four tests, and the Calc 2 people, you've got the quizzes and the tests. Those are, that's where you get your in-class portion of your grade. How does that work? What I will do, I will email the class with the test, and I will also post it on Blackboard. We'll talk about the timing and the window just a little bit, but that will get emailed and posted on Blackboard. So you get the direct copy. You're gonna get a PDF copy of that graded item, that test, that quiz, whatever it is. You get that. You do your work. Do you have to print it out? No, you don't. Some people like to, right? You know, it's very convenient to have everything in one spot, the directions, the problem. So that's where one thing, for some people who only print a few things, printing your tests and quizzes can definitely be helpful. And just like in person, I try and give you enough room. If you need extra rooms, no problem sticking an extra sheet of paper or something like that. But I try and give you enough room to do all your work. Again, I need to see the work. 
that's the extra little, the tiny little price you're paying for having the ability to have all of these tests and quizzes as take home. So as take home, you wanna use your notes, you wanna pause and refer to a video. Again, we'll get to some more good habits, but all of that is fair game. But the little price you pay is I need to see some work. Just having the answer with no work is worth very little credit. How much work do I need to see? Again, that's always discussed in the videos. And if you ever have any question about it, you're ever concerned, just ask. Again, that's a very, very quick and easy back and forth, like you should show this a little bit more, you know. But honestly, most of the time, in person, it's never a big deal. You're taking the tests in front of me, you're doing things in your head. There's no other way for you to get around it. But for this take home situation, it's kind of like, you know, that little bit of, if you're thinking about should I show the step, you probably should. And again, always, you're watching my videos, I always make it clear, this is fine, I understand you could do this, but I need to see this. I'll always make that very, very clear in the videos themselves. So, you work on the test. Either the test itself, because you printed it out, or you're doing, you know, you've got your own separate paper and you're just writing out problems. If you're doing your own separate paper, just keep everything organized. What, you know, are there sections? Are there problem numbers? Make that clear. You do not have to copy the full problem. Now, you know, little things, like if, if it's an equation, you probably wanna recopy that. You know, like a calc person, you've got an integral, it, it's good to put the original integral. But like, especially the stats people, you've got full big word problems, you don't need to recopy the problem itself. Okay, that is a really easy way to waste your time, to take a lot of unnecessary time. Your, what you submit can just be the answers, but again, keep it organized. What part? This is part one, problem one. This is part one, problem two. Keep your work neat. If you're doing separate scrap paper, I know every once in a while things get out of order, but try and stay in order. I, it's really a pain for me when here's part one, number one, and then here's part four, number one, and then there's part one, number three. You know, again, if you're doing it in scrap paper, try and keep them in order. Um, there's no limit on how much paper. I mean, some people try and help with that. Every single problem gets its own single scrap of paper. I mean, you may kill a few extra trees that way, but we can make that work if that helps you keep things organized. So that's the key. I send you the test, you do the work, and now you need to submit it but how do you submit it? Several different options, any of which are fine by me, but in some way I need to be able to, you submit your work and then I could see not just your answers, but the work as well. So number one, typing doesn't work out very well for this. The stats people, you know, sometimes to type out a few sentences, but there's still a lot of, you know, math work that could be frustrating. You're comfortable with that, I'm fine, we can make that work, but most people prefer something by hand. So what are some good options? Well, if you have a scanner, you could always do your work, send your work through a scanner, and now it's been created, uh, it's been converted into a file. Scanners almost always make things into PDF files. PDF files are the ideal. They are by far my most preferred option. They open up the easiest. They have the fewest issues when it comes to emails. Some of these things we'll talk about, the size of the file can get too large and you could crash your email. It gets rejected. You think you sent it, but it didn't actually go through. It rebounded and came back. We still got a lot of good things to talk about, to talk about, to make sure those things don't come up. But one of the easiest ways is to use PDF files. A lot of the PDF files, whether your test is two pages or 12 pages, it doesn't matter. It could all go in as a single file and again, makes it very easy to submit. Even for PDFs, so some people like each page is its own individual PDF file. That's fine with me too. Some of your email systems won't let you attach more than six files. So send two emails. Send me an email. Hey, these are pages one through six and a follow-up email. These are pages seven through 12. I'm fine with that. It's just that I can get your work and then I can clearly see it and open it. And a PDF is the most ideal way to do that. So if you have a scanner, that's great. That's a perfect way to do that. A lot of the new printers also have scanners built in with them. So that's an option. If you have a smartphone, there is a free app, TurboScan, T-U-R-B-O, TurboScan, S-C-A-N. 
TurboScan. It is a free app. Again, no allegiance here. I'm not saying it because it's the best app. I'm saying it because it is a free app. It is what I use. When I do your notes, when I'm making the videos, again, you'll see when you get to them, cameras over my desk, I'm writing things out, kind of similar to what you would see on the board if we were in person. But afterwards, I scan those into a PDF file so that you have access to them. I use TurboScan. It's very friendly. I'm not a very tech savvy person, but it's very friendly and easy to use. It does a lot of the formatting for you. It's very smart and like when it sees words on the edge, it tries to make sure that it shows everything. It doesn't zoom in. It's again, TurboScan, a very, very friendly app. I've had several students say, uh, email me later on and say that that's been a very good app that they use not just for my class, but for others. By the way, when we talked about sending emails when you have questions and work, this is another good way. Like if you want to send me work, if you don't want to type it out, but you've got something in your notes, same thing. PDF file, it's a great way. Hey, professor, I'm doing this problem. I got stuck here. Or I couldn't make sense of that. Can you look at this line and you send me your work? It's an excellent way. So PDF files, but PDFs are not the only ones. Okay, any, you know, again, your scanner, your turbo scan, that works great. But documents, some students, you know, through different technology, they have Word or other document type um, applications and that on their tablet, on their iPad, they could write on their iPad or tablet and that it could be saved. And that that is an easy way to create a file. Sometimes those files come up as PDFs, Sometimes they come up as Word documents. I'm fine either way. You know, we'll make that work, but that's certainly another good option. Similar when students use a stylus. You know, a stylus is kind of similar. It's just the stylus just kind of records and, you know, again, you just use your finger or you can get like, you know, one of those like little pens or something, maybe keep your work a little bit neater. But the stylus can work as well. Pretty much, I'm, I'm sure there are little things that I forget because students you know, have other ways that they send things, but these are the main ways. And the last main way, our students take a picture and they send me a JPEG. If you take a picture, I can't be more clear, pictures are my least preferred option. Pictures are the ones that have by far the most issues. And I'll say why in just a few minutes. But if you're gonna send a picture, a couple of things. Number one, it must be a JPEG file. Some pictures come up as, what is it, HEIC files. My computers, uh, you know, everything I have is Apple related. I cannot open HEIC files at all. So those will definitely not work. But JPEG files, make sure you send a JPEG. Secondly, for some reason, students take pictures and then I get sideways work. Do not send me sideways work. If you're gonna send a picture, at least take the time to rotate the picture so that it is vertical and that I can see your work. It's not a major thing, but I would take a couple of points off if we're repeatedly having this sideways issue, okay? At least make the rotation and make sure that it's vertical. Another issue that comes up with JPEGs, people take a photo, but they don't even bother looking at the photo that they take. They take it in darkness. I can't see their writing. Or they take it from a distance. Can you see this? Probably not. And even if you pause the video and try any kind of zoom in feature, it's gonna get so blurry, it's gonna get ugly. So if you're gonna take photos, at least make sure you take it from a closer distance, right? Zoom in, maybe again, maybe it's like you could zoom in the whole problem, maybe you have to do a, the entire page, but have it so that you can see it. Check it before you send it to me. If you can't see it, I can't see it. If you see trouble with borders and shading or it's dark, well, put your photo, uh, you know, put it, under, uh, put it under a light, take another photo, just do it again. That's all there is to it. So just to check. So that's what I mean. JPEGs can work, but you just sometimes have to take a tiny little bit of extra effort to make sure that they work. And here's the last problem. JPEGs are by far the largest file. Of anything else I've said, PDFs are small files, Word documents or other documents are almost always small files. The only real issue that comes up occasionally is just it limits the number of attachments. 
But again, even then, just send me multiple emails. Professor, these are the first few pages. Another email, Professor, these are the same. That's fine, I have no problem with that at all. If you use JPEGs, that is almost definitely going to come up. Whether you attach the JPEGs as attachments or you embed them inside the email, both have trouble. So two things, sometimes lowering the resolution. Your pictures, you know, they're, they're almost too detailed. So it takes so much data and that all you can fit is like two pictures without overloading the email. And like I said, even some of these tests, just the nature of the way some students do it, you're just doing a picture per problem and I would really, really prefer not to have to open 15 emails from you because you're literally sending me one picture per email. That is just, it bogs down my email, it causes other issues on the server. So that's, that's really a terrible fix. That's really not a fix, it's just a, a terrible workaround. So let's do better. So let's avoid JPEGs if possible. If you use JPEGs, be aware of the possibilities. Did your email go through? Did everything load? Can you see everything? So that's our submission. I send it to you, you work on it, you submit, and that you submit through some of those ways. Okay, so what's our timing? How is this gonna work? So I send you this email, when do I send an email? How is this gonna work? What you're going to get, you are going to get a six hour window. And the, si the standard six hour in window goes from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., okay? That's gonna be our standard window. And I'm going to give you two days. Every time I announce any test or quiz, there's going to be two days and there's going to be the same standard 4 to 10 window. Okay? You pick which of those two days you want to take the exam. The default is the second day. So if we have our test is Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. If you want Tuesday from 4 to 10 p.m., you have to send me an email before Tuesday at 4 p.m. Let's even play it safe. Let's say before Tuesday at 2 p.m. If you wanted, you could even email me that day, but at least a couple hours before that testing window would open. And I will email just the people who chose that window. I will email you the test and you could get started and you would have to submit it no later than 10 p.m. that Tuesday. If you do not email me for Tuesday, Wednesday, the second day will always be the default day. So you'd only email me if you have a problem with both or if you want the previous. The second day would be the default day. That will be the day that everybody gets the email and then by 10 p.m. that, so again, that would be Wednesday, 4 p.m. Wednesday, the test is out. By 10 p.m. that Wednesday, you would have to email me your solution. That's the way we are going to work this. So now 4 to 10 p.m. that's a big window and now some people start thinking wait a second are these tests and quizzes six hours long? No. No they are not. Okay. In general quizzes for me are typically 30 minutes in person roughly okay and tests are roughly an hour. Double that. Let's play it safe. If you're taking a quiz, give yourself an hour. If you're taking a test, give yourself two hours. That's what you need to think about. When you are thinking about the test window, you need to think for a test or a quiz, do I have two available hours to work on the test in that given time frame? So again, Tuesday, Wednesday, let's keep sticking with that same example. I tell you, you've got a test Tuesday, Wednesday. You either email me to choose Tuesday from 4 to 10, and then you have any time between Tuesday. So if you get home from work at 6 p.m., you've got plenty of time, okay? Because again, for a test, all you would need is two hours, okay? Maybe you have to go to work later. So maybe you have to go into work at, say, 7, 8 o'clock, or you have other plans or something like that. Well, then you'd want to make sure that you're available from, say, 4 to 6 for a test. Again, the quiz would be shorter. That's what you need. So if you tell me you have a conflict, it's not that you need the whole six hours to be available. You need to have one hour for a quiz, two hours for a test available within one of those two windows. 
If you do not, then you definitely have to email me and let me know when you would, and we'll arrange something, okay? Maybe it just doesn't work. Maybe you have to go to work at four o'clock and then you don't get home until 10. So you're, you're at work the entire time that testing window is open. Of course you would get, you know, we'll work something out. So that's the basic premise. Now, let's go back and talk about advantages, okay? I strongly recommend preparing for in-person. Thinking about this, thinking about future semesters where we are gonna be back in person as the regular de facto situation. So thinking of it that way, test, study and prepare the way you would for a regular test. But now take advantage of the online scenario. So how do you do that? Well, again, I'm thinking about two hours for a test that should only take you one hour. So you take the test, you sit down, you take the test. Maybe you already start, you've got your notes ready and organized to go with it. Maybe you just take it, just try and do your best. And then after you finish that hour, then you go back and you say, wow, you know, problem number three, I'm really not too sure about. Take advantage, you've got more time. So take advantage of that. Don't just submit it at that point. Go back, flip through your notes, go back, watch an extra video. Now notice, you know, a six hour window is a lot of time. And even though I'm saying two hours is all you need, if you have the extra time available, well then you could certainly use it. But again, I can't say that enough. If you only have two hours open, that does not entitle you to another testing window. Um, but if you have extra time available, that's certainly a way you could use it to give yourself a little extra cushion. So maybe to try and get home a little earlier, just so you have that little extra buffer that if you do struggle a little bit, or especially if you know, wow, I'm really a little underprepared for this test, that you have a little bit of time to make sure that the test goes well. But that's the way to do it, everybody. Take the test as you normally would. Think about it, and then take advantage and say, wow, if this was in person, I would've got creamed. But since it's not in person, I can go back and I could relook over another example. And that you could think and plan for later tests so that that doesn't happen again. Especially in this online scenario, that when you take the first graded item, that you should really have a sense and say, wow, yeah, I knew what I was doing. I am on the right track, I'm understanding my homework. And that will continue so that you should feel good when the second graded item comes up. But if the first graded item you say, oh boy, that was tough, I was not prepared, you make the adjustments. Why were you not prepared? Did you not do as much homework? Maybe you didn't finish the videos. Maybe you didn't do enough homework. Maybe you weren't doing that, you know, getting back and doing that, that frequency that I always talked about. Not doing fresh problems, but just reminding yourself of the different topics. So that way when you get in the test, it clicks. It's not, wait, what is he asking? I have no idea. And now you gotta spend a half hour just thinking what the directions mean. No, 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 that you're already there. It's like, okay, yep, I know what I need to do. And the time spent is actually working on the problems. That's the ideal way we do this, everybody. So again, one more time. How does it work? And now let's get away from Tuesday, Wednesday. Now we've got another test scenario. And let's say this one is Wednesday, Thursday. If I announce it as Wednesday, Thursday, and Thursday 4 to 10, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. is your choice. You don't have to email me anything. On Thursday, you will get it and that you can work and you submit it before Thursday 10 p.m. But again, because we don't have any set schedule, maybe Thursday is a work day, but Wednesday is an open day. Maybe Thursday you've got a night class, but Wednesday. The reason I'm giving you these two windows is because I don't know your schedule. So I'm trying to make this work for as many people as possible and to give you a nice large open window, but to not just give you 24 hours and people think that they're just gonna be re-watching every video from step one and they're just gonna sit there and take the test alongside watching every video for that portion. That's, that's definitely not what this is about. So the Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday works for you. You don't have to send me anything. You get the email. Thursday at four, you submit it before Thursday at 10. Thursday doesn't work for you, you let me know in advance and I'll make sure I send you the email on Wednesday, but that means your test is due Wednesday at 10 p.m. So that's how it works. That's the way we're gonna make this work. Again, other things come up. You know in advance 
that maybe, I mean, hey, maybe you already know your work schedule doesn't fit with this. You can let me know right now and we'll try and find an alternative test window. If enough people have too many conflicts, we may try and shift something for the entirety of the class. But again, to be honest, previous semesters, this has worked well. It's a few exceptions that need to be made and the vast, vast majority of the class will fit into one of these two scenarios. So the default is the second day. You let me know for the first and you definitely let me know if you have any other conflicts. And if you have other conflicts, I mean, this is just being proactive, which is always a good thing in life. Don't just let me know with a problem. Try and give me some solutions. You know, professor, you have the test Wednesday, Thursday. There's just no way. I'm at work Wednesday and Thursday from 12 to 12, and I know there's gonna be no way I can get this done. What's your solution? And then maybe you, you make that solution. You're like, well, I can do it then. I could do it here. I can very often, not just with testing, but in a lot of the other scenarios, I can work with you, but again, you gotta give me notice, you gotta keep me in the loop. By the way, everybody, you know, we're going through a lot of tough times. The pandemic is continuing. This is not something that we're just finished with. You know, if any of you are going on campus at the beginning of the semester, they already have the temporary mask mandate. So just, you know, in general, things may come up. I want you to be aware of that. But you could always let me know. You don't have to share too much personal information with me, but you just need to let me know when there's problems. And like I said, we can normally, I'm trying, I really, really try to work with you. If you're reasonable, I can typically give you what you want. Sometimes people don't always give the most reasonable fix. Though. So that's our basic setup. Give yourself time to work. Make sure you know that you'll know the test well in advance. So that's up to you to make sure that testing window works. You give yourself that time, not the full six hours again, as we keep explaining, but enough time to get it done. You email and communicate any problems that come up. If you need to adjust, we can do that. Now, when you're actually submitting, check your work before you submit. Okay, I can't say that strongly enough. If, you know, part of the reason I'm letting you email me your work back to me and I'm not making you submit your work through Blackboard is sometimes little hiccups come up. You're trying to get something done before that 10 p.m. deadline, but your computer is a little slow. You have a, an internet glitch and now all of a sudden just that little hiccup and the file is not loading correctly. There's just so many different things that can potentially come up and I don't want you to have to worry about that. If 10 p.m. you're still having a little issue, hey, maybe don't send me the whole test, but send me an email that you're having a little hiccup and it's fine. Okay, so little things will come up, but check before you submit. What do I mean by check? Check your work. I mean, I feel like this is, we keep talking about this as take home, but it's so similar to in person. Did you do all the problems? Are your answers there? Is your work, especially if you're doing the pictures, but even the PDFs, is all your work there? Is all of it visible? Maybe you accidentally forgot to include a page or a problem. These things happen. And just like in person, sometimes people wait. There's something on the back. You know, again, make sure you check and that you've done all the problems and that all of your work is attached. You didn't forget something, nothing's missing. A uh, few other follow-ups. Technology. There are minor hiccups, but nothing major. So a couple of things that we could always cover our bases. Did your email move to your send folder? That's, that's kind of a minimum. If your email moves to a sent folder, now if there's any other problem, that's always your evidence that you don't have to worry that, hey, I sent this. You could always forward me that again, and now I can see the timestamp and see, yes, you did send it, and for some reason there was this extra hiccup. Um, did you attach the test? I mean, it's, it's kind of silly to say, but we're all guilty of this. You send an email, but you forget the attachment. So, of course, make sure, did you, did you attach the test? And like I just said, inside the test itself, is it legible? Are all pages there? All, all problems there? All of that is your responsibility, everybody. When you send your test in, I will email you back, confirm. That's literally all I'll send, just literally the word confirm. But all I am confirming is that I received an email with something attached to it. 
I do not at that stage check to see all the problems are there or check that it's visible. I want you to know, so I want you to have that secondary part, but again, you shouldn't have to wait for me to confirm. Again, just the nature of me checking email, I try and be around at that time, but if I you know, went to bed a little early or something like that, if your email comes in a little late, you'll get that confirmation from me, but it's not that immediate. You send it in, one minute later, you see confirmed from me. That's not the way it works. You'll get a confirmation from me, by the next day, that is an absolute guarantee, but that is all, again, all I'm confirming is that I received something, that's it. You should check to make sure it's the right something. Okay, moving on past there. 24 hours after the final deadline, that is the latest I will accept anything. There are late penalties if you miss the deadline. So let's go back to the Tuesday, Wednesday scenario. Tuesday was the early, you wanted, you needed the test a little earlier. Wednesday is the main default schedule. Wednesday, 10 p.m., that's the due date. If you're late past that, you'll get some points off. How many points? Depends on how late. You know, maybe it's just a little something. And, and by the way, again, everybody, you let me know. You got home later from work, you need a little more time on the exam. Again, you communicate, I can try and help you. Maybe it's still too late and I have to take some points off, but it could be minimalized, but that's a possibility. Maybe you get home and it's just, you're too late, you're too tired, you can't get it done. Wake up, get a good night's sleep, wake up and do the test in the following morning. Get it into me as soon as possible. You would lose more points for submitting it. So again, Wednesday night it was due. If you submit it, say, Wednesday after midnight, you lose some points. You submit it Thursday morning, you lose some more points. But you're still in a good range. You know, even, I mean, think about it. Even if I took off 20 points for being late, you've got a real score to work with. If you do not hand in anything, you get a zero. And that's when the zero comes. If you do not send me any email, let me know anything is going on, and we're a full 24 hours after that last submission deadline, that is a zero. And to be honest, it really doesn't matter what your excuse is at that point. You've known about the test too far in advance. You've had way too much time to actually have the test at your disposal. That if, again, I know things can happen, car accident, I mean, there's just a lot of different situations, but that's part of your responsibility. I'm giving you a lot of freedom to work on your own schedule, and that includes the test, but that's where I need to hear from you if something really, really major came up. And maybe I don't give you a makeup, but we can work something out, but you gotta let me know before 24 hours after the test. How do we review? This is easy. So after everything is submitted, and then a full 24 hours, so that way everything, even lates, are now in, Typically about 24 hours after that, I will post an answer video and I will send a reply to your email letting you know what your grade is and any points off. And mostly that'll be, it'd be like part one, number three, minus two, you know, things along that line. So you should use the review video and then use that and you could see where any mistakes you had, how to correct them. And certainly after that, if you still have questions, you could always ask, but that's the way to start. You submit the test, the full 24 hours after the final deadline is the last submission I will take no matter what. And partially that reason is I want to get tests back to people. I want you to be able to get your grade to at least have that grade and also have the answer video. So maybe you kind of want to use that before you continue forward in the class. Okay, I think that covers everything. Again, we mentioned all the testing, we mentioned the outside resources, being careful with them, not using stuff that you're not supposed to know, being tested on what the actual material we cover. We've talked about how to submit, good habits, make sure you check your emails, make sure everything is visible in there. And okay, the last part will just be the first assignment, everybody. So make sure you watch that last video and that'll finish the first day.